Thank you, David. Good morning, everyone. I'm John Hudson. I'm the pastor here at Pilgrim Church, United Church of Christ at 25 South Main Street in Sherburne, Massachusetts. And uh, on behalf of the deacons and David and the choir and those of us who will be leading worship today, I welcome you and I welcome those of you who are watching at home or might be watching us later this week on YouTube. And so, welcome. So I've been blessed in my career um, to work with youth. And um, it's one of, I have to say it's one of the great joys of ministry. And uh, I just want to lift up that yesterday, uh, seven, uh, sixth and seventh graders went into Boston and we went to the Brighton Food Pantry. And uh, they do a huge Thanksgiving distribution and a meal next week, and we had no idea what we were going to do, and it was just funny because we peeled about 700 potatoes <laughs> and cut up carrots and onions and all this kind of stuff, and, and uh, it's kind of fun to teach people how to peel potatoes if they've never done it before, and, but we were down in that kitchen, and, and the thing that really impressed me is the young people were just so excited to do the work because I think that most of us in this world, uh, regardless of our faith tradition or even even the lack of a faith tradition, I think that there's an impulse in most people to make the world that they inhabit a better place. And the gift that we have as a faith community is we're in the doing good business. Does that make sense? And so, you know, in the years ahead, as we try to figure out who we are in the world and how we can serve that world, I think that that's one of the things we really need to emphasize, is that we empower people to do good works and God's work in the world, and everyone from the youngest to the oldest, and so it's in that spirit that I welcome you here today. Just a, a couple of announcements before we uh, begin. Uh, the Pilgrim Band is playing today. It didn't make it into the bulletin. Uh, it's Josh Hartman, Lori Young, and Doug Ambos, and they're going to play right after the children's sermon, and the children will stay with me and kind of to listen to the music. Uh, many of you know about the Angel Tree. The Angel Tree is one of our biggest outreach ministries. We work with a group in Hopkinton called, what's it called? Anyone? Well, um, I have no idea what it's called, but it's a really good organization. <laughs> and uh, we like give upwards of like 100, 150 gifts to families in need. And so that's coming. You'll get more information about it in the E-Word this week, and then we'll talk about it next Sunday as well. Um, on the back of the bulletin, you can see today, it's our pledge campaign, and I just want to encourage you, if you haven't already, uh, to return your pledge card, or if you've never made a pledge before, to consider making a financial commitment to our church for our ministries in 2023. And finally, uh, if you live in Sherburne, you've got this postcard, hopefully, and if you live out of town, you're going to get it in the next day or two. It, it lists all of our um, offerings uh, for Advent and for Christmas, and we're going to be like, for the first time in three years, we're going to be, like, running at full speed this um, Advent and Christmas, and we're really looking forward to it. But on the front, the quote is, I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. And so may God give us courage for the living of these days. And I'd invite you to just turn to your left, right, back, or front to greet each other with a sign of peace that can be a wave or a handshake or whatever you kind of feel comfortable with. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Ray Dearborn. I'm one of the deacons here at Pilgrim Church, and one of our responsibilities is to tr try to recruit all of you to help us. So um, that is to be a lay leader, donate flowers for the altar, um, host coffee hour. So a few ways you can do that are um, going to our website, pilgrimsherborn.org. There's a sign-up genius link there where you can click on the link plug your name in and what you want to sign up for. Um, we're also working on getting a QR code in the bulletin um, and where you can just use your phone, scan the QR code, bring you right to the sign-up genius. Um, you can also email the deacons. 
We're deacons at pilgrimsherborn.org. You can let us know what you want to sign up for and what date, and we're happy to plug that in for you. Or you can just call Kate in the office. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to see me after service, and we can talk about it. Um, so, okay, moving on to the call to worship. Uh, the call to worship this morning is Psalm 111, verses 1 through 10. It's page 490 in your pew Bible, and we're going to read it responsively. So I'll give everyone a minute to get there. It's page 490. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works, and given The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Amen.
Please be seated. <clears throat> I just wanted to do a, a little teaching lesson before we um, get into the confession of sin and assurance of pardon. I was thinking today as we were reading the Psalms that uh, it's important to remember that at one time in our tradition, actually, we didn't sing hymns. We only sang the Psalms. And so the Psalms were a regular part of our worship every single week. And so one of the reasons that we like to include a Psalm for a call to worship every single week is to kind of dig deeply into the Psalms. Because the Psalms, if you look, it's really the prayers of the people. That's what it's about. And the word fear that you saw in that Psalm, it really means awe and respect. It doesn't mean fear in the sense that we might think. So, um, so we're uh, in our week of Thanksgiving, um, and today's theme for worship is generosity. And, and I think one of the ways that we're generous to people is when they do something for us, we thank them. We thank them. And I think it's sometimes easy to thank obvious people in our lives, but sometimes we can forget people uh, to thank them and because uh, we're moving too fast or, you know, like zipping through the Dunkin' Donuts line and we might forget to thank the lady for giving us a cup of coffee or people who serve us or maybe our kids' teachers or the doctor who cares for us or the attendant at the nursing home who cares for your mom or dad. And so at this time, I'd like us to kind of look into our hearts and, and think about all of the people in our lives that serve us and serve the people that we love and maybe just think of one person and pray for them that you want to extend deep and sincere thanks to. So let's be in a quiet spirit of prayer. God, this day we ask you to open our hearts that we might be thankful, not just in word but in deed, and that we might be generous with our thanks, especially for those that we pray to this day. And we pray in deep thanksgiving and do so as a sign of our unity in Christ and pray the prayer that he taught us all to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So at this time, I'd like to invite the young people to come forward for a children's message. So please come up to the front. Yeah? So 
Well, that would be generous. Generous kind of sometimes means that everybody gets their fair share. Actually, some people, and everybody gets even more. You should get something else here. All right, so. So if you're thirsty, can you guys just slip this? You sure? You can't. <laughs> these for me. So, all right, so you guys need to split this up. Is that okay? <laughs> Paul, do you, do you have something for us? Because see, when you're generous, you give out snacks to everybody. So, and I have no idea if you're supposed to eat these or not, but if everybody wants one, you can take it. I think, do I have enough? Here, there's some vinegar. And split it, okay? Yeah. Make sure we'll get you one on the way down. Okay, would you make sure that there's another snack if they're in the hospitality closet? All right. So, guys, don't open those. Okay? Not yet. All right. So, um, so the lesson I just want you to think about is, so when we're generous, it's like you don't just do the dishes you also offer to sweep the kitchen floor, okay? You just don't fold your own clothes when they're clean. Maybe you help your mom fold the other, or dad fold the other clothes too. And, um, and maybe if you're at lunch and you've got a lot of food and the person across from you doesn't have much food, you can offer them some of yours. So does that make sense? That's what, and the reason that we're generous is because God is generous to us and blesses us every single day with so much light, air, sunshine, warmth, and potatoes, so. All right, let's bow our heads, put our hands together and talk to God. God, for the gift of this day, we thank you for the gift of this Thanksgiving week. We thank you, help us to be generous, God, with all that we have and with our love with each other and move us into this week with deep gratitude and bless each of these young people. And all this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. All right, so you can go downstairs. And this is Dunlap's in the back of the church. And can one of you guys give me this bowl too, please? Thank you.
Today's scripture reading is from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 15, and it's on page 942 of your pew Bible if you want to follow along. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. The one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not regretfully or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your partnership with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen. And again, from that text, the point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not regretfully or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. Generosity. Generosity. The the human virtue, the Christian virtue of liberality in giving. Giving more than is expected. Giving beyond the norm. Giving not just from what we have left over after taking care of everything else, but instead giving from the main course, giving in unexpectedly abundant ways, giving because God gives to us so much and even more. Generosity. We also know what generosity looks like when we experience generosity in this life, when we express generosity to another person we love or care for or are concerned about. There really is nothing like that feeling of someone being generous to us, being generous towards another child of God. A few weeks ago, my best friends in the world threw me a birthday party, and as if that were not already enough and a very generous act of friendship, Before dinner, my friend Barb asked each person at the table to go around and tell me directly to my face one way that I had made a difference in their life. And yes, I cried. I was both embarrassed and overwhelmed at the same time. It was almost too much, almost too generous. They were so generous with their love. Friday, I went to my office to get books for the sermon today, and there hanging on the doorknob was a bag filled with a pound of coffee and a candle and a beautiful note of thanks from someone in this church. I never expected that, but, you know, work here at church and in the world the past months has been so exciting and so exhausting, too, for me and for the staff and for our volunteers as we've worked so hard, as everyone is working so hard to get back into this post-COVID world. You know how good it feels when someone unexpectedly notices your hard work or says thank you out of the blue or gives you a gift for no reason other than an act of kindness? 
that feeling stems from being the recipient of generosity. Then, later that same day, I parked in downtown Natick but forgot my quarter for the meter and figured, ah, it'll take me five minutes to go to the bank. No problem. But as I returned to my car, there was a Natick Police Department parking officer holding his ticket book in one hand and a pen in the other. He said to me, is this car yours? And I said, yes, I was just gone five minutes. And I was about to beg him not to give me a ticket when he smiled and said, you know, you can get 15 minutes free if you just push this little button on the meter. <laughs> and then he did. And then he smiled at me and he said, I hope you have a good day. And I love your bumper stickers too. <laughs> and in that quick encounter with a stranger, I received the generosity of grace, unmerited grace, forgiveness, kindness that was so generous, a generosity of spirit. All those gifts of generosity and acts of generosity happened to me in just a matter of days, which makes me think I could not survive, we cannot survive in this world without regular acts of generosity being extended to us by loved ones, by strangers, and by God. By God, whose very own nature, God is generous, a generous God. You know, friends, if I had but one lesson, I hope all of us would take away on this Thanksgiving Sunday on a day of thanks, in a week of thanks, when we are challenged by God to wake up to all of God's blessings in this life, home and hearth and food and freedom and shelter and people who love us and people we get to love too. Let our lesson be this, that since God is the source of all blessings and all gifts in this life, that since God showers us every single day with so much goodness, that since we praise God every Sabbath, we praise God from whom all blessings flow, then as people of faith, I believe that we can do nothing else but then be generous ourselves as a direct reflection of the depth of our faith. Do you hear that? God is ever generous to us, and therefore we are called and expected to be generous towards others and towards ourselves, a generous God. This is what St. Paul writes in his second letter to the Corinthians that we heard Ray read today. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, God scatters abroad, God gives to the poor, God's benevolence endures forever. Now the context of Paul's concerns, what may be the first thing that we think of when we hear that word generosity, and that's the giving of money to a charity like our church or the Sherburn Benevolence Society or the Natick Service Council to give money to good works like hurricane relief to help another child who is in need, to give money to the church or to give neighbor to a money to a neighbor who is going hungry or struggling. Now, Paul was writing this letter to the church at Corinth. It was a new church that he had started. It was in Greece. And he was sending along with the letter a leader named Titus to pick up the financial collection for the poor that every new church was asked to take on a regular basis. So a core part of faith then, and faith always, is to give generously from our money to support those things that God cares about, like showing mercy to people in need. This is what the pastor and philanthropist Walter B. Russell said. Generosity is constantly cultivated from an overflowing sense of gratitude for what God has done for us. Now, hear that again. Generosity is constantly cultivated from an overflowing sense of gratitude for what God has done for us. For us as Christians, the main inspiration to be generous comes from being aware and thankful to God for all that God does for us and is doing for us. Do you hear that? We are thankful because God is generous. We are generous because God is generous. And what I want us to recognize today is generosity is not just about money. No, generosity is about an attitude in this life, and at its best, it permeates how we live 24-7.
Generosity as a lifestyle, as a life well lived. Now, one website I found listed seven forms of generosity. Thoughts, words, money, time, things, influence, and attention. I'll say that again. Thoughts, words, money, time, things, influence, and attention. Uh, one of the moms uh, of a young person yesterday, we were talking in the kitchen, and um, one of the fascinating facts that I've read in the last couple years is that families who eat dinner together on a regular basis, their kids are less at risk for drug use, for depression, for all kinds of things. And it's because of the gift, right, the generous gift of time spent together at the dinner table. Um, so, again, why be generous? St. Paul teaches us the point is this, the one who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. In other words, whatever spirit we put out into the world, however we are generous in the world, or not, that will come back to us. If we sow seeds of generosity in how we live, we will get back generosity directly from others in proportion to our giving. And I just believe that with all of my heart and all of my soul. When we put love out into the world generously, that love always comes back to us, often tenfold. But if we put miserliness of the spirit or love out into the world, we will reap that as well and risk being bereft of love. I am convinced, friends, that we do sow what we reap, that what goes around comes around. And so when we are generous joyfully in our giving to others and in giving thanks to God, that will absolutely echo right back to us in blessings, in love, in grace, in fun, in abundance, and in joy. So if I forgive others freely and do not hold a grudge, as I am tempted to sometimes, others will forgive me too. And if I give generously of my money to support a cause that means the most to me, like this church, or I support a friend's nonprofit theater in Minnesota, or Habitat for Humanity, or the New Life Furniture Bank, then eventually and surely that will come back to me in service to others and others being gracious to me. And if I am a loyal and loving friend to those people who threw me that birthday party, then I've no doubt they will be the same to me. And then some. So abundantly, reap abundantly. Why be generous? It empowers us to live a life of meaning and purpose, to work for more in this life than mere financial rewards, for more than just material comfort, for more than the illusion of security that we might feel when we store away as much as we possibly can, just in case. So here's the truth. He or she that dies with the most toys actually does not win. I really believe that. The world, but the world is forever trying to convince us that self-enrichment is the most important value in this life. We hear it in the media. We often hear it from our leaders and it just permeates the messages of this daily life. But friends, if we choose to walk with God, our generous God, then we will listen more intently for God's voice above the roar and the din of the marketplace and the race for wealth. And instead, we will hear God calling us to be generous and in generosity to give with joy. Because as Paul writes, God loves a cheerful giver. God does not want gifts given out of guilt or fear or mere obligation. Gifts taken from the leftovers and not the first fruits. God loves a giver who gives freely and with joy and with trust in God. So my hope is that generosity would become a lifestyle for each of us, my friends, a way of life, a way to follow the example of Jesus Christ, Generosity as a way to love, as the way to love. As the pastor Rink Warren said, we can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. To give is to love. God, neighbor, world, 
self. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. May you find your generous God on Thanksgiving Day and on all days. May you love this generous God, and then may each of us be generous in our lives, generous as a way of life. Let all God's people and God's givers say, Amen. We don't yet know where the journey will take us or how it will shape our lives. We simply feel a quiet stirring, the call to be faithful stewards of what God has given us. It is the call to live a generous life, and we can't ignore it. We soon discover that cultivating a generous spirit doesn't come naturally. As God directs us, we start to prune away our excess. We make hard decisions, giving to others as we become aware of their need. A true spirit of Christian stewardship starts to take root, and we begin to see the shapes and contours of what God intends for us. When a change is needed, we start over, a little wiser and a little stronger than before. Over time, generosity becomes a habit and then a lifestyle. It becomes more than just something we do. It is now a piece of who we are. And once in a while, we step back. Was it worth it? Did we make the right choices? Did it amount to something beyond a feeling or our name etched on a donor plaque? Then something reminds us of all the beautiful things that have happened on the journey and of those who have joined us along the way. As we've done our part to lighten others' loads and care for our little corner of the earth, they've been watching. As generosity has changed us, it has also taken root in them. And we are afforded one of the greatest earthly joys there is, the passing of our legacy to the next generation, knowing that we're leaving it in good hands. Friends, now is the time that we share our 
our communal prayers with each other, the prayers that we, we speak out loud because we are asking other folks to pray those same things. And I just want to lift up some prayers today. It was almost a mistake to open up the paper this morning. There's some tough stuff going on. I want to pray for our brothers and neighbors and sisters um, in Colorado. There was an awful shooting at a LGBTQ club in Colorado, and several people were killed and injured. And so I just pray for that community. I pray for their safety, for their healing. Um, and so let's pray for them. And also, there was an accident in Waltham. It was a bus full of Brandeis kids, and one kid was, was killed. And so I want to pray for that campus and for those people. Um, I want to pray for those of us who, when we come to the table on Thursday, are just aware that there's an empty chair, that we're missing someone. Uh, it might be the year anniversary of someone's death, or it could be many years later, and we still miss them. And it just speaks to how much we love them. And so I would ask uh, kind of God's comfort on those who are missing someone. I want to ask God's uh, safety and protection on all those who will be traveling this week. There's going to be, I think for the first time in like three years, going to be a lot of people on the roads and in planes and on trains, so I just want to pray for them um, and, uh, and pray for and encourage those of us who will be sitting at abundant tables to maybe open up our table to someone who might not have a place to go or might have to eat that meal alone. So I just ask you to consider that and pray on that. I want to offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the work that the middle school youth group did at the Brighton Food Pantry yesterday, in particular thanks to Kate Marion and Eric Brooks, who are wonderful advisors and drivers. Um, are there any joys or concerns that people would like to share this day? I mean, is anyone thankful for the potato chips I had at the front of the church? I need a little prayers. I can't be the only one who prays here. Yes, Lori. We have continued prayers for my brother-in-law, Frank, who's uh, suffering with pancreatic cancer. Okay. So Lori asks for prayers for her brother-in-law, Frank, who is facing pancreatic cancer. Other joys or concerns this day? Yes, Paula. So prayers for your dad, who was passed on. What's his name? For Paul, who was, it was his birthday today, and so a happy heavenly birthday. So other joys or concerns this day? I also want to offer a prayer. We're having an Eagle Scout ceremony this afternoon. How many Eagle Scouts, Charlie? For three. They were, they were like no Eagle Scouts for like three years, and now we're like lining them up. So... Uh, and the young men are really excited, and their families are, and we're blessed here at this church to actually be a sponsoring institution. Yep. So Charlie said you got an open invitation. It's at 2 o'clock today. And also, it's just an, I think it's another way that we uh, support our young people in the community. So... Any other joys or concerns? Peter. Friends who invited me to Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. So Peter gives Thanksgiving for uh, folks who invited him to their table. So, all right, let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Let us pray. God, each week we sing such familiar words, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Remind us to see those as more than words, God, to see that as an act of faith and a, and a deep belief that you are the source of all things in this life. And therefore we are called to be thankful. And therefore, because you are generous, you call us to be generous too with our time, with our talents, with our money, with our attention, with our thoughts. In all things, God, help us to be generous, overflowingly generous. We ask you, God, to be with all of the concerns that we've lifted up, for the concerns that we have in our hearts. 
Uh, special prayers for those who are traveling this week, for our neighbors and friends in Colorado, and for those in Waltham especially. Be with them. And in the quiet places of our hearts, God, we ask you to listen to our prayers this day. All of these things and so much more we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And so there comes a part in every worship service when we get the chance to respond to how God has fed us here and in the world to be generous. And so it's in that spirit that we will receive this morning's offering. Dear God, we are so very grateful for this glorious day you've made, the hopeful anticipation of this season, and for this generous community of believers. Please help us, Lord, to use these gifts to generously support this community and the wider mission of Pilgrim Church. 
We ask for these things in your glorious name. Please be seated. I want to invite you to come to coffee hour downstairs uh, immediately following worship. There's still tables set up actually in the social hall because the first responders in Sherburne actually hosted the seniors in town yesterday for Thanksgiving meal. But there's still plenty of space in there, so please come down and, and join us. Let's be in a spirit of prayer and for our benediction. So God, send us forth into this world as your generous people. Help us to overflow, God, with giving and with love, with forgiveness, with grace, with mercy, with kindness, and with hope, God. And help us to follow Jesus in all these ways and bless us with a blessed Thanksgiving week, God. Let all God's generous and grateful people say, Amen.